Right, all right, all right. We are live. You'll have to excuse the earlier video because I was testing a stream because something decided it wanted to screw up. So if y'all can hear me when you join in, let me know that you can hear me. We got the Twitch stream going. And where is Slack? Slack, 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 Slack. Not Slack. We do need that though. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so I'll just let y'all trickle in as per usual. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to go ahead and, you know, get started here shortly. We'll go through the usual stuff. Well, not the usual stuff. It's only the second stream. We'll go through questions um, that y'all may have. We'll go through breeding, the breeding mechanics tonight, which reminds me. Let's move that over here. Uh, ba 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 Don't open in that window. All right. All right, there we go. Nothing really there that y'all can see. What's up, Taffy? How you doing? Taffy, is today your birthday? I know you have a birthday coming up real soon. I am good, thank you. I start my vacation this week. Actually, I start my vacation right now, so... 23rd, I knew it was close. I know you, me, and uh, Valesa are all pretty close. I am tomorrow, so... Yeah. Uh, we got Araya Niso. I am so sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. Um, Barsham, what's up, Shag? How's it going? Thank you very much, Taffy. Dragno, all right, all right. That's easier to use. <laughs> all right, I'll call you Dragno. I'll try to remember that. So, got a few different things that we're going to kind of go over um, at some point today. Not at some point today, but at some point during the stream. Basically, just going to talk about breeding. We're going to talk about um, any questions that you guys have. We're going to, you know, hang out and chit chat for a little bit. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know if there's horses you want to see. I mean, I know you don't want to see my horses because they're nothing special. But, um,. Yeah, so we're going to give people a few more minutes to kind of trickle in. I know I said we get started at 9, so for the moment, we're just going to kind of dilly-dick around. Um, yeah, so uh, how's everybody's week going? Lots of winners this week, lots of winners. And y'all can hear me okay? I'm just making sure. Sort of taffy. This year to participate. Very long time player. Sounds good. All right, perfect. Thank you. Work was a win. Did a server transfer today? Didn't break it. Hey, not too shabby. Are you? I didn't realize you were in. You were in uh, tech. You were on the tech side of things. There, Taffy. Sort of tech. Work with your IT department for a majority of the stuff for real. Ah, for real estate. Got you, got you, got you. All right, well. Yeah, we got about five more minutes, so we're just going to let folks kind of trickle in and do their thing. You can feel free to start asking questions if you want. Um, just going to kind of leave that part of it wide open before I go into the breeding piece. And then, you know, the breeding piece will kind of be the main focal point, but if I'm being completely honest, the breeding, there's not really much to it. Well, I should, let me backtrack already. Um, it's just not a lot I can really explain about the breeding piece. <laughs> um, 
So, you know, again, I will try to answer as much and as many questions as I can. Um, I don't have Mike shooting me text messages tonight. Uh, he's in he's in Europe, I think. Yeah, he went to Europe. So he's out and about enjoying himself. Much needed vacation. I let him out of the basement, you know. So we're just, uh, you know, trucking along. Um, oh, I do want to. There is one thing I want to show. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm drinking a beer. So I apologize. Need need to name a horse that? What are we, what are we naming a horse? Sorry, I missed it. Auditor by trade, yeah. Put that one in your names list. Yeah, I'm, I can't complain. It's it is good beer. It's it's Land Shark, so it's uh, nothing crazy special, but it's it's gonna get the job done. And we got our cooler here, my trusty cooler. I don't know if you guys you should be able to see this. It's my son's cooler for school. I put a few in here so that I didn't have to get up. So, figure I make use of it while he's sleeping. So we're gonna have a good time, hang out, have some fun, hopefully a few laughs, talk about some horses, some stuff in the game, and hopefully I won't give too much away. Don't let him take it to school. He's actually been out of school uh, the last three days. He's had uh, strep throat, so probably gonna. I don't actually, you know, I think he might be going back tomorrow. So, yeah, I should probably, uh, <laughs> I should probably make sure I empty that out at some point today. <clears throat> so, um, let's see. Grogu loves beer. He sure does. Uh, vacation plans. Honestly, don't really have any vacations plans. Um, just going to kind of hang out. So, it'll be, uh, my son goes to daycare you know, tomorrow and Friday. So that'll at least give me and the wife a chance to get out and do something just the two of us, which, you know, doesn't really happen very often these days. So, um, but yeah, yeah, we, hopefully we save some money <laughs> by not going someplace. I doubt it'll happen, but uh, and again, I will apologize because I am, you are going to see me looking to the right, which means you get the left side of my face. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's because chat is on the right hand side. Uh, the code is on the right hand side and what else is, on? yeah, the code is on the right hand side. So anywho, 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 but I didn't forget a drink this time, so I should not be coughing up a storm. Just maybe slurring my words a little bit as we get deeper into the conversation. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get things rolling here. So just going to make this as broad as I possibly can. So for to get started, no, I cannot give you sire ratings. Um Sorry, not going to do it. I can discuss how sire ratings are, you know, grabbed and how we determine who goes where. Um, but I can't tell you what the ratings are. <laughs> so please don't ask me because um, I'll likely either ignore you or say something stupid or smart assy to you. One of the two. Um, but anyways, so with that out of the way, um, sires... Sires are pretty straightforward, right? Um, if you look at, you know, one of your horses, like as we talked about the last time, sires basically have influence on their babies, um, same way mares do. Uh, you know, distances, surfaces, maturity, um, if they like an off track, um, you know, and they both have like... Uh, uh, not they both, but they have talent levels as well, right? So certain sires typically produce better than others. So as far as give you sire shares, Rob still waiting on his tappet. <laughs> I got it. I got it in Rob's escrow account. It'll it'll be there. 
it'll be there hopefully uh, within the next week. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, really, there's not much to breeding. I, you know, again, I'm kind of I'm gonna kind of rely on you guys for questions here, um, just because it's about as straightforward as the horses work, right? There's just not much for me to kind of explain. Uh, there's percentages, there's variance curves as far as what gets passed to which horses and how it gets, how it gets passed. Um, it runs through a bunch of different checks. So without me going into the code and like breaking everything down for you step by step, um, there's a, a certain kind of like, there's a certain method that Mike has built where it basically kind of just rolls through different scenarios and a horse, a sire falls into a scenario and then it hits a certain part of the code and it creates some randomness and then builds off of like what the actual rating of the sire is. So, uh, that is pretty much the gist of like how it works. I mean, you basically pick your sires, you know, as far as your scratch breads are concerned. Um, and it goes from there. And then again, for, as far as mares are concerned, like, right, so one thing I will say, right, is I personally, at least it's been my experience. I believe the mares are more important than, excuse me, the mares are more important, or the mare, excuse me, is more important, is probably the most important part of the the breeding, excuse me. And the reason why I think that, at least from my perspective, is, is that it's always been my experience that things typically get passed from the mare and not necessarily from the sire, if that makes sense. So like, if you think about it, hey, Skip, how's it going, buddy? So if you think about it, like if you're using a mare, for example, like a, like a, one of your owned mares and not like a scratch sire share that you got, typically you'll see a lot of the time you'll see that the, well, actually more times than not, you'll see that everything gets passed from, not everything, but a good amount of traits get passed from the mare. That's kind of why I think, um, I think mare breeding can tell you more than scratch. Um, spin. That's a good question. You know, if you're breeding, if you're using mares, um, typically you'll have a starting point as far as where, uh, you know, you can start a baby. So there's that. Um, as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as using sire shares, using sire shares and, you know, scratching, I mean, typically there are, you know, again, sires will pass, um, you know, distance, attributes and things of that nature so you pretty much kind of have to rely on like what they were good at in real life um, again there is randomness built into it so it's not always going to be one for one right so if you had a miler you know you're not always going to get a miler like it doesn't always work that way but it's kind of a starting point um, so let's see yeah so that's that's essentially breeding you know if you guys have any questions again please just float them on in um, I did get a question kind of well I got this question from Skip earlier today which I'm just gonna kind of spin right through it here real quick where um, he kind of wanted to know about the upgrade downgrade list and how it works um, and also how we do how we rate sires um, so I can tell you a lot of it is geared towards real-life statistics um, inbreeding that's a good question I will actually get to that Shaq that's a good question um, but basically as far as like how we build the file the file is basically is manually built it's researched all the sires are researched by at least to this point Mike I have a feeling not I have a feeling I will be part of that you know this upcoming year um, so as far as the way that it works though is that we try he tries to get in everything all at once because it's such a tedious process. So if people are sending him stuff throughout the year, it basically gets added to a list and he'll update the list at the, the very next update that we do. Right. So when we or he'll import them into the game at the very next update that we do is basically the best way to explain it. So <clears throat> as far as that is concerned, yes. Um, as far as that is concerned, basically what we do is is we build out the file, we research the the sires, you know what they were good at, um, what their uh, stud fees are going to be, things of that nature, 
and then we just kind of build them into tiers and give them ratings and it kind of goes from there so that's typically how how that works um as far as upgrades and downgrades are concerned i skip had asked you know for a full list and being completely honest it, it could get to be depending on how much time and effort is put into this stuff it can get pretty significantly long as far as what and when we do things to these these sires um i mean i kind of did a high level overview and there was at certain points where things were updated in the hundreds and the thousands you know so kicking out a list like that is very very difficult to do unless we just give a very very high level this one increased this one didn't didn't increase that sort of thing um, the description stuff that Mike does, you know, on the forum is kind of the, uh, Hey, fuck you too, Donnie. Appreciate that, bud. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of, um, kind of lost my train of thought here, Donnie. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of, it gets to be tedious, right? That's the point that I'm making as far as the sires are concerned. So I'll have to talk to Mike, see if I can produce a, um, like a, a list and just keep it as basic and high level as possible without releasing any ratings, without um, really detailing much other than, yeah, this one increased, that one decreased, that sort of thing. And yeah, that'd pretty much be uh, the gist of it. Uh, so back to Shag's question. Is there a downgrade or anything baked in for inbreeding? So... I knew this question was coming, and I actually asked Mike before he got on the plane because I could not find it. I know that there's inbreeding stuff in the code. Um, so I'll put it this way. Um, inbreeding can both increase and decrease your chances to get a better horse. Um, that is the best way to explain it. So if you're looking at it, if you're looking at a normal scale of like say like little to no inbreeding and point A or you start with like a one to ten scale, inbreeding you could potentially move that's like say ten is the talent level, right? We'll say or ten is the max talent level. Um, we'll say that you know you could potentially bump it up to twenty, but also lessen it to as much as negative ten, right? And then that's a very high level overview, but basically what it could do is it could broaden, you know, your ability to get a talented horse. Now, again, some of it is, is okay. Right. But, um, it's kind of, it, again, it's pretty subtle. It's, it's, you know, to quote our, our fearless leader, it's a lot like pornography, you know, it when you see it. <laughs> so your example there, shag, you know, constitution tap it, AP Indy, um, yeah, you might be over, that might be overkill. <laughs> so that's kind of the easiest way I can explain that. Um, but yeah, so it's, it, all it really does is change the variance curve, you know, and again, everything is built on variance in the game. So what the player ultimately does with, by picking different sires is either adds or subtracts from the variance. I was waiting for you to ask for the sire rating since he said not to. I figured you would do that. <laughs> I don't know if DB was here when I said don't do that, but again, if you're if you just joined, uh, just don't ask me about sire ratings because I'll either ignore you or you'll get a smart ass answer from me one or one way or the other. Um, is it a question of how much or to which sires? Uh, I I'll put it this way: like if it looks irregular to you, think of it in real life right real life terms like you just you're not going to see you're not going to see it like you know i mean you really shouldn't see it all that often you know sire to damn sire to grandfather like that or that that shouldn't really exist right or even shouldn't really even see the third generation you know get it at all so um not really a question it's just some of it is okay and some of it is okay too much of it is is what's really going to start to kind of swing things in a negative direction. Right. There could be benefits to a three, four cross, um, as opposed to something like a two, two. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, that's a good way of putting it. Um, they don't, they don't, it's inbreeding. Inbreeding does. So I get that that's kind of a contradiction, uh, Padre. 
Um, but it, the game, the breeding does check for in, uh, sorry, the breeding mechanic does check for inbreeding. So it does in that sense. Um, but like I said earlier, all it really does is kind of swing the curve. Um, you know, it'll either give you a better opportunity to get a good horse, give you a, or give you a, um, I don't want to call it an opportunity, but make you more susceptible to getting a bad horse. So some, some inbreeding is okay, but like, you know, I said earlier, you'll know when it's too much, right? Like you can see it. if you're, if you're lighting up like a rainbow, if you're seeing a ton of different colors on that thing, you may want to pull one of those sires out or move it someplace else. As long as it's with your second cousin, it's okay. Yeah. So I think that's, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> so, um, but again, like, like I said, I'm trying to keep it as high level as possible. Just know that there is a, there, some of it's okay. A little of it, or I'm sorry, let me back up. Some of it is okay. A lot of it is probably going to do more harm than good. Best way I can put it. Let's say you breed a mare to a sire and you get a really nice foal. If you continue to breed that same sire to the same mare, does this give you a negative by the sim? No, each breeding is done individually. One has nothing to do with the next. So that has, yeah, it's all, everything is done in a single instance. So no need to worry about that. So if you have, you know, luck with a particular sire or if, if a particular sire is doing good with a particular mare and you keep using it over and over again, I mean, yeah, good for you, but it's, it's more luck than anything else, to be honest. It's not like a, it's not that you found a particular skill or, or like a little nuance in the game or anything like that. It's just, you're using a really good sire or maybe you're not using a really good sire, but or maybe the mayor is really good at passing her traits down, that sort of thing. And you're getting the same traits over and over again. I, so as far as like the um, uh, the mayors are concerned, the mayors actually have a percentage in which they'll pass traits down. Some mayors are better at this than others. Um, I didn't really look at the percentages. Um, as far as I, I, I usually, what I'll do is in these situations is I'll usually check the the, per, the max percentage of the, of the mayor. I've seen as high as 90% of the time they'll pass traits. I've also seen as low as 55%. I don't know if it goes lower. I don't know if it goes higher. I didn't really look for it. Um, but that's typically how it works. So sort of like kinky sex, Donnie. Some is okay, but too much is bad. Indeed, that's very true. Next, very true. Oh, we'll just, we'll leave it at that. I won't, I won't go any further into that. That's a that's a another tutorial for another day. <laughs> Does a mare pass the trait to pass traits to her daughters? Um, that's a good question. I don't think so. I think it's all that that I think that one is actually um generated um randomly by the game. That's a good question, though, Spin. I can look into it and get back to you and give you a sure answer. But I'm pretty sure it randomly generates that one. Uh, so we should maybe use caution in using really well-bred mares that could only compete in claimers. Um, so there's... <laughs> I know there's a couple of thoughts to this, to that question, Rancho. Um, so a really well-bred mare doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the traits out of the really well-bred mare. So if you have like a ghost zapper, MDO, you know, AP Indy, that doesn't mean that you're going to get those traits. Um, it's possible that you get some of them if the mare doesn't pass. But if the mare is just a bad horse altogether, but she has a really high ability to pass her traits, that's what you're going to get. So I wouldn't say it's in your best interest to use a mare like that. I know some people have had success doing it. I also know that some people run the horses, um, I don't want to say incorrectly, but not to their full potential or you know their maximum ability. So it's possible that some of these mares that you're picking up in claimers do have good ratings. They just never really got figured out by the previous trainer. So is that too? Um, language DB can understand. <laughs> All right, I missed that. 
Uh, let's see, we got, I always assume that if a sire worked well with a mare, it suggested it would be more likely to work again because things mesh, mesh well the first time. No, it doesn't really look at that, Shag, to be honest with you. If a sire worked well, it's probably, again, luck of the draw. Excuse me, sorry. Luck of the draw or um, the mare passing down traits. So I would lean more towards the mare passing down traits in that scenario. Soup. Taffy said, I'd like to know too. What would you like to know, Taffy? I'm sorry. I must have missed. So, yeah. But that's kind of the gist of it, you know. Um, about the mayor passing the ability. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's random. Like I said, I don't think that that's a passable trait. Um, mainly because everything that I have looked at as far as that particular trait is concerned it's sporadic is the best way i can put it it varies so much that you know yeah i remember you sent me the question taffy so you, taffy had asked me a question about the boost um and since i have this open for sire cards and she's talking about this card here the boost uh on the far right so you pick your sire, your damn sire, the DDS, and then the boost. So the boost basically can be looked at as, you know, again, the variance curve. So, you know, that's you you want to always go high. Best way I can put it. Auto mod held a message. Why did you hold a message? Oh my god, it blocked inbred. Okay. Sorry, guys. Let me see here. Yeah, so the boost is basically that. It's it's you always want to go as high as possible. The boost is basically just meant to help out the horse. Um, it could, you know, again, it could negatively affect the horse. You know, it depends on what the ratings are that come with that particular sire. Um, Sudo nineteen sixty nine. So all the giant causeway king mambo superstars from a few years ago was just because there were so many of them being bred and law of averages with two really good good sires. Yep, that is. Pretty that's a fair way to look at it, uh, Soto. Um, it really, really. So again, like if you're using the if you're using the best sires in the game together consistently, um, you're gonna get more graded winners. Like you're you're gonna get more talented horses. You're gonna get the ones that are gonna, or you're more likely to get talented horses. I shouldn't say you're always gonna get them, but <clears throat> if, if you know, again, the Tappet is the is is the the big example this year, right? Because Tappet's been bred probably, I don't know what nine hundred times so far this year. I'm exaggerating, but uh, let's see. Tap has been bred, yeah, 478 times last year, 280 times this year so far. Um, and we're halfway through the year. So I know breeding tends to, you know, tailor off a little bit as the year goes on. But that's a perfect example of, you know, you getting more graded winners because you have a more talented horse. Or there's an opportunity for a more talented horse, rather. Uh, let's see. B Peoples, back to crosses for a second. If you do a breeding that is completely lacking any duplication of a sire in its pedigree and the coating doesn't flag it as inbred, does it still have that minus 10? No, no, no. So it, it would just use whatever the standard variance curve is that it comes up with. So the variance curve is, is, is you know, again, it's... Based on the sires that you use, and it's it's kind of like a max starting, max min stopping point. I just use 10 minus 10 as, as a basic example. This is Padre. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, Padre. So, guys, also, if you can, um, I also need to know what your usernames are because um, I typically give credits away when we're done with these things. So um, let me write some names down. I said I was going to do this before, and I didn't. We got DB, um, Padre, Bry, Super Taffy. Uh, I saw Next in here. FL Rancho. Oops. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Who else did I see? Shag. Skip. 
Uh, what else do we have? And I think that was everybody, right? Oh, uh, where are you? Dragno, that was the other one. Dragno, all right. I think I got everybody, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. Sutto said, does the time of the year you breed the horse make a difference? I've read where some players stop breeding after September because they feel a chance of getting a good horse deteriorates. Uh, no, that is completely false. <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know or you missed the last stream, um, horses technically don't mature. Or the, the earliest a horse can fully mature is three years old. Um, the max that I've seen it is six. So, um, and they'll typically start falling off the cliff when they get to the age of eight. So if they're outside of the maturity curve. But, um, or if they've maxed the maturity curve out. But, um, yeah. Logan login and computer login are different account because I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's all right, man. I got like four different Twitch accounts and I can't keep track of any of them. So, trust me, you're good. Sorry for the cryptic nickname. Yeah, uh, DB really had me fooled there, buddy. Uh, let's see. I would guess that has to do with the fact that no horse matures at two. And so, yep, that's exactly right, Taffy. Um, so, again, yeah, I mean, breeding... Breeding later doesn't change anything. I mean, if you look look at Spice Turtle, Spice Turtle was bred as a three year old and is the best horse in the game. I mean, I guess arguably the best horse in the game. I think he's the best horse in the game, so I'm gonna go with that. Next bonus, next bonus, next bonus. Got it. Uh, let's see. We got DB says. Also, can we start from the beginning? I got distracted. Yes, yes, we can. I hope that answered your question. Uh, you could also just breed and sit with the full. Yeah, you can definitely do that too, Spin. Um, it's actually, again, so and I, I kind of had the feeling we were going to get back into this conversation, um, but there are certain benefits. There's a lot of benefits to being patient. There's also benefits to being aggressive. It's about knowing when to do it. Um, <clears throat> Beer Keg showed me a horse not long ago that he had that kind of one, or that was super, super stellar, like, as a two-year-old and yeah, I mean, it was, it was super stellar as a two-year-old, but it didn't fully mature. I mean, obviously because they don't fully mature until three. So who knows what that horse is going to do as it gets older. Now, is that to say that, you know, it's going to run better. It would have run better later. I don't know, but you know, he ended up getting a pretty good horse out of it the way that it ran, you know, as a two-year-old. So, I mean, again, there's, there's, it's, it's up to the trainer to make the decision, right? And what we're ultimately trying to do is we can't make that decision for you. We don't want to give you too much information to allow you to, to allow the game to make the decision for you. So that's why we kind of let you guys figure it out with the uh, past performances and how the horse does on the track. And by you guys, or by we, I mean, Mike. Uh, you go, oh, let's see. I read that. I'm going to do that more now. Breed and sit. <laughs> uh, very good spin uh fyi through sunday there are 365 tappets bred this year i guess about 80 haven't run yet yeah no i mean that sounds about right like i said we know you know what's kind of going on with the the breeding or the, on the breeding side of it we know that it's getting crazy um you know again the breeding control should kind of help that and we've already seen progress with that in a lot of ways uh, so yeah, I assume we're getting paid by the comment. Oh yeah, for sure. You're, you're, it's every, every comment gets you a penny. So make sure, please don't spam the chat. <laughs> I was kidding. I'm kidding. Please don't spam the chat. Um, next says in covering dozens of grade ones for the SRF and B2B over the years, virtually every race has at least one starter. From a well-bred but poorly performed, there were very few, if any, starters from poorly bred but great race mares. Yeah, so I would argue um, next with that. I've seen, a, so looking at the history of the game, nothing recent, right? But looking at the history of the game and looking at some old horses and what have you, I have seen a lot of horses that were, I that were, pretty damn talented that got run completely wrong and it's not just a few like it's not like a one-off it's a lot so 
I would venture to say that more times than not, we are probably running our horses wrong, right? I think a lot of us take the aggressive approach where we start running at two, we start running at three, um, you know, and we we kind of just leave it there. I mean, if you think about it, though, horses, you know, they can do a lot of work as they turn four, five, six, you know what I mean? They can get really good, so... Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 kind of a a crapshoot, and again, it's a, that the the scenario that you bring up next could also be a a construct of like how the game operates, right? Because the game operates based on what the player base does, so it's the same thing as the 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 auction. It's the same thing as the um, I guess the ticker when you're buying sires. It's all player driven. So whatever the players are doing, the players are basically determining the economy. The players are basically determining the um, the performance on the track. And for that reason, you could get a lot of skewed results. And that actually brings me back to my next point that Skip asked because he was trying to basically correlate this to... Um, he was trying to compare it to real life, right? And I guess in real life, Into Mischief is the number one dirt sire in the world right now. And or maybe in the United States, I don't remember what his comment said, but, um, you know, in the sim, I think he's like 18th or something like that. Something crazy. Um, that's not to say that he's not a highly rated sire, right? Um, he's definitely up there, but we can't after he's bred. And, you know, if, he, if, if say players get talented horses or what have you, we can't force players to run a horse the way it should be run that's up to the player so that's really what kind of drives what people are doing now yeah you could sit here and say well he should be number one you know should you guys have him rated higher maybe but the horses that he's on the same level with don't seem to have that problem so again i would i would really chalk it up to what the players are doing with him and that they just don't have a good beat on him right Best way to explain it. Um, let's see. Shag said, here's my number one breeding question that probably relates to me only. Any chance we can get an extract file with snapshot sire prices? As of the time the extract is run, pretty please, pretty, pretty please. Um, it's funny you asked this, Shag, because long ago before I got into the game, I asked Mike for this exact same thing, and he shot me down. So I'm going to say no. I don't think he wants to give that information out. Um... Yeah, I'll I'll leave it at that. Uh, I, again, I can bring it to Mike and see what he thinks. And again, if there's a a very shrouded way that we can do it, then maybe he'll go for it. That's going to require some coding on my part. But um, yeah, I, I think for now he's he's pretty. He likes to keep things as far as the sires, the ratings, the prices, things like that. He likes to keep them pretty tight lipped. He doesn't want anybody to really gain an advantage, so to speak, in terms of the pricing of sires. So, uh, let's see. Peter might come in, come after me for all the horses you run. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're developing that side of the game now. So, you know, there'll be, you know, PETA infractions and, you know, they'll be protesting outside your, your stable doors and might even block you from logging in. Um, let's see. So, do, us running the horses incorrectly can have a lot to do with the lack of feel for the actual horse, too, though. Can't physically see the horse, and there's no feedback, which tells us the horse hates this surface or distance or feels like it's immature and could do with the long spell. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, I agree with that, Soto. And, again, we're working on that side of it. It's going to, you know, we've talked about jockey feedback. Um, we've talked about potential breeding indicators. We've talked about a few different little mechanisms that would give the player a little bit more insight to the horse. Um, however, it is a fine line. We don't want to give you everything, right? Uh, so... What I would say is, though, is that sometimes, even when things are super obvious, players just ignore it. Like, even, like, if you have a horse that's running, like, has shown you, like, great improvement. I'm sorry, there's something on my floor over here that's kind of messing with me. Oh, just a piece of paper. All right, got to clean my office. Um, yeah, I mean, I say, like, you know, for... For, for the talent and, like, the lack of information, I definitely agree there's a lack of information, right? And, again, both myself and I know King AB have, 
kind of leaned on Mike a little bit to get more information out to the player. Um, and again, we're going to work on that. Uh, but again, it, you can only like some players just don't listen, right? They don't listen to what other players tell them. And the more experienced, successful players, they also don't really pay attention to what's going on with their horse or pay attention to the breeding or pay attention to like, you know, the improvement, right? Like, like a horse could improve or look like it improved, you know, significantly going from eight furlongs to 10 furlongs. And because it didn't win the race, somebody just says, it can't be this distance. Let me go back to eight furlongs. And that's, that's kind of the mentality that we see my, and again, I'm guilty of this too. Right. Right. So I'm just, so everyone's clear, I'm not shitting on the, the player base. That's not what I mean by this at all, because there are some very, very good players. Um, and again, most of you do find some success with, with some of your horses. It's just, we also miss quite a bit. So, uh, let's see fair for what it's worth. I'm not looking for minimum prices or anything. Just hear what's being shown on the site right now. Yeah, no, I got you shag again. My, my stuff was, I, when I asked Mike, I had every intention of that on, uh, actually writing up a, you know, a story and doing a whole B2B thing on it and everything else, but it just, he just wasn't comfortable with it, which again, completely understand. So yeah, but again, I'll float it to him and see what he says. Um, how much will the virtual milkshakes that we can administer to our horses before they run cost? Uh, we actually, yeah, you're talking maybe, you know, a million SIM dollars plus, um, you know, plus with the new PETA feature we're adding and, you know, the, the stewards, you, you know, you might get caught and then, you know, horse gets suspended. So that's a joke, by the way, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I understood the feedback it has to be limited, but if we run a horse, on and off track, it would be nice to know if it ran poorly because of the state of the track. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I get it too, right? But I think some of it's pretty obvious, right? If you, if a horse, and again, I'm going to put this, make if a, if a speed fig doesn't increase on something that the horse is not typically doing, so like if you run a dirt horse on in a, a muddy track and it goes, you know, it runs, if it doesn't run in the same ballpark of what he normally does, chances are he doesn't like the surface. Um, same thing with, you know, going from dirt to turf. It's it's essentially like there's a pendulum almost where it, it can swing one way or the other or it can stay in the middle, right? If it stays in the middle, that means the, ho- the horse is going to be good on both. Um, off the breeding topic, if my horse would race optimally set at 20 speed, but I have it set at 80, will it race more poorly than if I let... Um, yeah, so it can. You can actually screw its form up. So that's if the jockey listens to you. <laughs> so, so there's there's times where there's there's a jockey override, so to speak. So if a jockey thinks that the instructions you put in are kind of crappy, like that doesn't agree, he doesn't agree with them. Like so, like for example, if it's, if it's drastic, right? Like like you say, you you. A 20 to an 80 is pretty drastic. So if it's drastic like that, the jockey's basically going to be like, uh, you know, maybe we just, maybe I just take them back and ignore what you say because I'm a good jockey and I know what this horse wants. That's typically how they, how they work, how it can work. And there's other times where if you run that 80, you know, it may blow up in your face. If the jockey listens to you and runs that 80, it'll blow up. It might blow up in your face. The horse might, could get injured. I'm not saying it increases the, the, the likelihood of injury, but you're, you're basically putting the horse in an uncomfortable situation at that point. Uh, let's see. Don't forget the bacon. That's right. Legit question. Donnie, you have no legit questions. Are horses more prone to injury when running the wrong distance or surface or of its preference? Um, no, I think the random, the random piece, or the random, the injury piece of it is pretty random. Um, and I think it gets done, it, it, there's really no, yeah, I mean, it's really just a random draw, to be honest with you. And the reason why it was done, and it's a, it's a super, 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 super minor, like, random draw in the sense that it's very rarely going to hit your horses, right? Because the, the concept behind the game is, like, we don't want your horses on the sideline, right? Like, there's no... There's no benefit to the player. If, if a player has 10 horses and six of them get hurt, that player is likely going to quit, right? Like, you don't want to play a game where everything sits on the sideline forever. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's um, 
best way I can kind of explain it is, is it's a random draw. It happens from time to time. Everybody gets bit by the bug eventually, um, especially if you run in as many horses as most of us are. So it does happen, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Padre Bryce said, Haha, DB, my buddy drenched his frozen vanilla yogurt with my pineapple habanero hot sauce this past weekend. Yeah, man, that, that hot sauce looked good, Padre. What type of point differential are we talking about on speed figures? Is a 90 versus a 90 indicative that a horse doesn't like something, or are we looking for a bigger margin? Uh, Rancho, that's a good question, but my, my answer is going to be it depends. Um, 90, so I did look at this not long ago across the entire game. 90 is typically the average um, speed horse, the average speed for a horse. Um, it's not the average winning speed, it's just the average speed. So I just want to make that clear. Um, yeah, I mean, a 90, so... A 90 versus a 90 with the same condition or with with this <laughs> trying to think of the best way to explain it. So if you went 90 going six and then you got 90 going eight, I would say that both distances, one of those distances is either right or both of those distances are either are, are wrong. Right? Especially if you think you have a talented horse. So again, like like we talked about this a little bit last time. If you have like for three year olds, for example, we're midway through the year right now. Um, they should be running in the hundreds. Like the the good ones, the ones who are going to win right now should be running in the hundreds easy. And it's clear, right? Like if you look at graded winners, the ones that win basically, the ones that win basically hit, you know, at least at this point, they can hit 108, 110. I think I saw 112 not long ago. Um, You know, again, so it really just kind of depends. I mean, and as you get into the four-year-old season, right? <clears throat> excuse me, as you get into the four-year-old season, uh, again, those numbers should go up even higher, right? You And we've all seen them. We've seen the 120s and the 125s and that sort of, that I don't know about 125s, maybe 122s, 123s. Um, so yeah, we, we've all, that that's kind of like the barometer, you know, if you're looking for graded, that's where you need to be. If you're looking for allowance, then yeah, typically a three-year-old you want running over 100 at this point. By next year, you want them consistently over 105, 110, somewhere around there if they're in competitive fields. Now, again, some of these fields just aren't competitive because players are afraid to place their horses in claimers, right? So because because people are afraid to place their, their horses in claimers, sometimes you have a good horse in allowance that's just running against soft, soft competition, so he just cruises, you know? So that's one thing to keep in mind too. And again, that does, that is one of the most frequent scenarios that I've seen. Um, so let's see. DB said, thank you. I used to interpret injuries on horses who were not over raced as trainer doing something wrong. No, I mean, really with so little control in the game, I mean, really the only, so you can definitely kill a horse's condition by running them early or just running them over and over and over and over again. Right. But that's pretty indicative on the, the, um, little icons on the screen so the little whatever they are here um these things so the auction you know when the or i'm sorry this here when it when the thumbs up or razor or piggy or the little <clears throat> excuse me or the little um uh injury sign or the bed uh sire price question i know sire floors can go up as more people use them do sire floors also go down if fewer people use them or if sires get downgraded or maybe that info is too revealing? Um, so no, they don't go down. Um, the way that it works is that based on the sire's success in the game determines the floor. That's how that works, um, Shag. Uh, as far as sires are concerned, and Mike and I have actually discussed this, where we've thought about raising so raising the floor of the lower end sires so like the the 10 point sires right so basically instead of being a 10 point sire be a 20 point sire you know whatever we decide but then for the sires that are higher up lowering the middle ground right so you wouldn't get a so a sire that normally got capped say at 250 um or a min a minimum a floor minimum floor of 250 might now get dropped down to 150 or something like that 
So we've thought we've kind of thought about tinkering with it a little bit here recently. Obviously, we haven't done anything yet because we want to get the pulse of the community. But figure now's a good now's as good a time as any to bring it up. So, uh, Rancho said ninety verse ninety three. Oh, so I mean, it's really up to the player, right? That's the best way I can put it, Rancho. I mean, if you think the three point increase is worthy of, you know, continuing to run at that distance, or, you know, potentially if it's not a big enough jump for you, maybe you move it. Or maybe you don't move the horse, or maybe you try something different. You know, it's not really a number, so to speak, to to key in on. So, got to reach in the old lunchbox. I don't think we talked about changes in form. Will the form rating go up when a horse wins, regardless of speed figure? Um. So. I may have caused some confusion on this, on the forum. I did go back and actually update my post in the, um, that fucking balloon just scared the living shit out of me. I thought somebody was standing over my head. Um, so <laughs> back to the, the form question, but the, the form, so I may have con- caused confusion with the form and the capper on the forum. Form has nothing to do with the capper. Uh, form is a back end rating. It's hidden. The player doesn't see it. They have no visibility into it. Nothing like that. Um, I will do that, Taffy. Thank you. I Thanks for giving permission. I appreciate that. Uh, so as far as form is concerned, form it really, the way that it works, I'm going to kind of quote a message that I had. Not a message, but what I had told somebody else. I think I told Dan this earlier. But form is basically a hidden rating, which um, builds as time goes on based on the trainer getting the horse in the right spots at the right time with the right instructions. So, yeah. So that's kind of how form works. Uh, the capper is really just indicative of speed figs. And if a horse, if it goes up, I mean, again, obviously, if you get it in red, that means the horse is running faster numbers. Or if it starts off as yellow or what have you, it means it's, you know, bred good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or it means it has a high breeding, breed rating, breed value, breed rating, whatever it's called. I forget what it's called in the back end. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's a good question, Donnie. But form, so just to stay on the form subject too. So next to talent, form is the second most important piece of getting your horse ready and getting him in, in, into races. So, yeah, you can't see it, but you you can't physically see a number or, you know, any type of, like, barometer that would tell you other than what the horse is doing on the track. So, that's the best way I can explain it. If you see a horse running good speed figs, also finishing in the money, winning races, yeah, he's probably in good form. Is that, I mean, it's a fair assumption to make. Either that or he's running against a lot of crappy ones that aren't. Um... So let's see. Is maturity based on pedigree? If so, how is that tabulated when many horses are retired at the end of the three-year-old season or maybe only have a few starts before they are injured? Uh, are you talking about in real life or in the game as far as injuries are concerned? But um, as far as maturity is concerned, the way maturity works is um, it's it is based on pedigree, right? So there's certain maturity ratings that get passed down from sire to sire. Let me just double check that in the code. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm right. I am right. Okay. So yeah, there are maturity ratings assigned to each sire. Um, and they do get passed to their, their babies, uh, their foals. (coughs) Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I mean, Again, some of it's a guessing game, though, too, right, Rancher? Like, I know, I get, I guess I understand what you're saying with your question now. Um, some of it's a guessing game. We just, you know, we don't know, right? We we put a number in, and hopefully we built enough variance to where you can get kind of a little bit of both, but that the majority of it will fall where we think it should, and that's kind of the way it works. think a horse there was a horse oh my god i'm completely spacing right now vindication i think was the horse i think he only ran as like a two-year-old if i'm not mistaken or maybe he did run as at three i can't remember um 
But I mean, a horse like that, right, is more or less what you're talking about, where he didn't really have a four year old season. So how do we know if he if he actually if his best years weren't as a four year old? Um, so though, I've always left my horses on jockey sled because I figured playing around with that would add another layer of complexity for me to to stuff it up. Yeah. So yes and no. Uh, again, I mean, I I've kind of taken the stance of run your horse a few times, right? Run them three to five times. If you trust the jockeys that you're using, then you can kind of key in on what the jockeys are doing with them and then start kind of building up that form, you know, by using a specific, um, uh, using a specific number on the slider. So, yeah. Let's see. So, yeah, I mean, I would always, you know, say three to five starts. And again, the jockeys will tell you they'll they'll they're literally telling you in the past performances as the horse does what it does so so if a horse runs poorly in a couple of stakes races is it better to drop down to allowance to see if he can get back to the winner's circle in order to improve his form might just be good to give him a break to be honest with you yeah i mean you could do it so the drop in competition is going to work i mean if if I'll put it this way. If he's in good enough form to beat horses at the allowance level, he's going to beat horses at the allowance level. You know, I think if I'm not mistaken, though, I think I, so something happened last year with, um, our version of the Olympics, which the name is completely escaping with me right now. But, um, and I think Dan, rested a couple of his horses super super long going into the the event and at that point it kind of triggered me this mind you this was before there it is equinix equinix um it kind of triggered me to start resting my horses a lot more um and again it's just kind of picking and choosing your spots a little bit better that's all i mean a lot of us like i said a lot of us want to play the game um but the game rewards patience so that's the, the, the best way I can really explain it. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, you can have a two-year-old, like I said earlier, BK had a two-year-old that um, ran like 10 or 11 times in his two-year-old season, and it kicked ass. But he probably killed it for the rest of his career because it's not going to, I guarantee you, it won't run nearly to what it was supposed to run with the wear and tear factor at three and four. So, but yeah, I mean, back to my original point, like there, Dan had waited you know, probably like somewhere between six and eight weeks, or maybe it was even longer than that, six and 10 weeks. Anyways, he walked out of there with a few graded wins. So it was one of the, you know, and again, that's probably one of the more competitive, um, you know, events that we have in the game. So, but yeah, um, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys, and this is not really... This is not a super sexy change, by the way. Mike did not get this in before he left because we still wanted to work out a few bugs. We didn't want to drop this on you guys and have it completely blow the server up while he was out of the country. So I'm just going to kind of show you something real quick. Obviously, I'm looking for into mischief uh, mares here. Um, I, as you can see, I'm on the Francois Four stable. See how quick that came up? I know it's only one record. I'm aware of that. Don't rip my head off just yet. If I go down to one of these stables and I do the exact same thing, see how long it takes? We're still loading. 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 Now it's there. That's what we've been working on. So Francois 4 has the change. Doc Holiday does not. So that's kind of what we're working on right now, and that's a bigger part of... Um, what we're coming out with, hopefully by the end of the summer, uh, with the mayor leasing. Um, and yeah, again, I can't get into details on it or how it's going to work. Like I said, we're still beta testing that. Um, but yeah, yeah. So stay tuned because more to come on that. All uh, right. That's why most good two-year-olds are not good after. Well, that's part of it, Tabby. Some two-year-olds actually have a four-year-old maturity window so there is there is such a thing as two-year-old form 
and some horses are you know better at two than other horses you know and ultimately what happens is is like when they turn three some of these other horses that were lagging behind them at two catch up and all of a sudden they're right there with the horse again but say for example say you have a two-year-old who technically isn't fully mature until it turns four well then yeah it might run good at two but then it might struggle at three as the other horses catch up and then at four it may get good again but it's up to you to decide like during that three-year-old season oh man does he look good does he look bad should i rest him should i wait that sort of that sort of thing so Mm -hmm. overrunning your horses will definitely kill them I and mean, when I say kill them, I mean like it'll. Sim Drag, no, I see you, buddy. I see your test. Um, overrunning your horses will definitely destroy their their peak. So, uh, if you want to get into the big three year old races, you have to be up and running as a two year old. So the game rewards patience, but doesn't necessarily encourage it. Oh yeah, of course. But that's that's the that's the give and take of the game. You know, and again, I would tell you this, if you have a horse that's kicking, kicking ass as a two year old and, you know, looks good, I wouldn't stop. I mean, don't stop. If you have a shot to get into the Derby or any triple crown race, you better do it because that shit ain't easy to get into and it sure shit ain't easy to win. No, I didn't see any of your other posts, Dragnal. So if you have questions, you know, please go ahead and ask. Um, but yeah, man, like like you said, it's it's a give and take. There's a push and pull. You know, do you want to be patient with the horse? Do you not want to be patient with the horse? Yeah, no, that definitely explains why I missed them. <laughs> um, yeah, but that little feature there where, you know, again, see how quick that comes back? Compared to doing it here, and that's an even different stable where it takes a few seconds, right? And that's with information cache too. So, you know, the point of it is, is we're trying to get this stuff out to you guys so that when the mare leasing thing comes, it's going to be a lot quicker. So, do horses need a run after a long break to build form? Yes. So, some horses are better at coming off of layoffs than others. And a lot of that has to do with the trainer um, and how far out the trainer sets them and what the trainer's done to them in terms of wear and tear and that sort of thing. But typically, if you're coming off of a long layoff, um, your horse is really going to want to... It may take a couple starts for it to get back up and running. So I would say if you're trying to get, you know, trying to get points or something along those lines, I would look for easy spots off of layoffs. Off of super long layoffs, not layoffs in general, but super long layoffs. <clears throat> yeah, I would say anything. I would say so for two-year-olds, six to eight weeks should be pretty normal. Um, you know, three-year-olds, five to six weeks. You know, as they get into the later part of the year, you might be able to squeeze in a four-week. And then for four-year-olds and up, you know, four to four to six weeks, depending on what you come across. Um or depending on how your horse looks or what he, you know, how he runs or, you know, how confident you are in them. Um, as far as claimers are concerned, um, I run claimers. If I'll run a claimer every two weeks, I have no issue doing that. I've found success doing every two weeks. I think the claiming levels, the, the competition is so scarce down in the claiming levels that, and I know a lot of people disagree with that because they'll, they'll argue, well, I have to run a 120 to win, you know, a $2,000 claimer kind of sometimes <laughs> but 120 at claiming just means that your horse is kind of placed correctly right a 120 at claiming means the exact same thing as a 120 at grade one your horse is in the right class level he's competitive he's always going to compete here so best way to explain that by the way all right so i think we're kind of winding down I don't see as many questions coming in now. Um, oh, there's one. Those points is a two-year-old carry the horse 
each point through their three and four year old season, and thus we keep seeing dead horses qualifying in stakes races and knocking currently better horses out of the race. There have been many opinions shared in the forums that this should be looked at and how long the sim looks back at the horses. Yeah, no, I don't disagree, Skip. Um, you know, I talked to Mike not long ago about a recency rating where, you know, points essentially so you while you earn points you also lose points on a monthly or daily basis um kind of dependent on recency i guess is the best way to do it what best way to explain it i mean it would be pretty involved i don't want to get into all the details here but yeah i mean again we've talked about having almost like a recency rating where the horses who are winning now kind of get more um get more of a look than the ones who won a while back. So yeah, we, I mean, again, we're aware of it. It just, it's a nuanced problem. It's not a simple one to solve because then you're going to get people who are like, well, my horse won this race. He should be here. You know what I mean? So it's a double edged sword, so to speak. Used to live in South Africa and still spend a fair bit of time updating the wiki with Sapphire info or South African Sire info. Is that worth the effort or rather send stuff to Mike or both? So I would say, um, I would say updating the wiki is probably your best bet. Um, Mike only does it once a year. So it's a super tedious process for us. Um, yeah, that's the best way I can explain it. So typically like I had hit him up (laughs) early in the year about, I think hot rod Charlie, I told him was at stud and he told me that's nice he'll get it next year so (laughs) um no he didn't really say that but he he basically told me uh as i've gotten more involved here he's he basically told me yeah it's it's just too much to do all the time he'd be updating sires literally every single day so and that's not something that i imagine he wants to do as much as he loves the game um yeah, I, I can imagine that not being a, a, a task from a coding perspective of somebody really wanting to sit down and do for a long extended period of time, day after day at that. So, yeah, just keep adding them to the wiki and he'll he'll get to them. It all gets stored in a database. Uh, yeah, I would always, you know, or or me. Dragno, you know, again, we can I can talk to Mike because I, I this year I'll I'll probably be involved in it as well. So probably going to lighten the load a little bit on Mike to make life a little bit easier for him and let him focus on the more um, the more hardcore pieces of the game, you know, the architecture and things like that. So either way, <coughs> actually, I think I have an email associated with the game now, too. I haven't checked it in a few days, but that's because we were having problems getting me messages sent. So you should probably look at that again. Um, let's see. Mike may have jumped the gun with art collector being a sim sire. Yeah, we've had that happen a couple of times, I think. Um, I think Battle of Midway was was another horse that retired and then I think he went sterile and then came out of retirement and then obviously had, you know, an unfortunate event happen. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that was the sire that that had happened with not long ago. All right, so any other questions for me? No, I don't know. Everyone's kind of quiet. Yeah, anytime, man. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna probably do more of these as time goes on. Um, you know, again, they're super cool. They're fun for me. I really want to do um, like a look into the past of like some of the older horses, some some of the ones that um, people messed up. <laughs> I think that would be funny to see like, hey, you had this horse who was super, super talented. And for lack of a better word, you fucked it up. That's the way it goes. You really screwed the pooch. You would love a look into the past episode. Okay, maybe, maybe. I did tell Mike that we would do... We would do a couple. I would do a couple of these while he was out of town. So, 
Um, so maybe I'll do another one next week and I'll find a few horses for us to go over. Or if you guys have suggestions, if you have, you know, you can always, uh, PM me the, uh, the horse you want me to look at and I'll go backwards and I won't give you all the ratings and everything else. Super taffy, like peek through my horses and find my fuck ups. (laughs) Oh man. I will find them. I will find them all. Um, Oh, hold on. Somebody's message got held. Oh, that was Taffy's message got held. Oh, sorry. Taffy, again. Let's see. Minds are blown. Would love that, especially mine. Yeah, so, yeah, again, if you shoot me a few, you know, again, shoot me a message. And if there's a horse, don't bombard me with, like, 10 different messages for 10 different horses. Just shoot me one message with one horse. Um and I'll pick a few out and we'll just kind of discuss where things went right and where things went wrong and we'll theorize, right? Because that's what we're doing here. I, as much as I can sit here and tell you guys about certain ratings and certain things going on with the horse, the engine is so damn complex that all I know how to do is code it. That's it. I don't understand the formulas that it's using in the slightest. And I'm pretty good at math. Mike is clearly a lot better. So, yeah, that's all I'm gonna. That's all I'm gonna say with respect to that. Uh, let's see. Shaq said, I love, "I love looking at the past." Next said, "Is my Tabit Prize a Colt or a Philly?" Uh, that's a good question. That is a very good question. Next, I think it's still sitting in the queue. I'll have to go and pull it out and find out. Um, Sim Dragno, one more. What are the implications if your sire and mare have conflicting traits versus similar traits? Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry. The stupid bot in this chat just told me it's now going to allow the word fuck ups. So it threw me off. I apologize. Um, one more. Uh, the implications if your sire and mare have conflicting traits. Um, so there's not really. I wouldn't really say there's implications. Like, I don't think it's going to hurt you. Um, you know, if you have a mare who's, you know, a router, for example, and she's not very good at passing traits, then what could potentially happen is, is like, say if you use, uh, you know, I'm, I know he's not available as a sire anymore, but I'm just going to use him. But say you use a sprinty sire, like city zip, excuse me, you're probably going to get a, you know, a, a sprinter out of him as opposed to like a router. So, yeah, that's kind of like, I guess that would be an implication. But I would think that, you know, sometimes you'd want to inject speed into a bloodline or something along those lines, too. So, uh, pee through your horses and find your fuckers. Man, that's like 25 years worth of fuck ups, though, Taffy. Um, it doesn't block fuck, but it blocked shag. <laughs> no, it blocked fuck. I actually had to add, it, it actually asked me. That's what kind of threw me off a minute ago. Good night, all. Thanks, Francois. Go to hell next bonus. <laughs> oh, I love it, Donnie. You're like, I guess, the um, the resident asshole. 25 years as well for Dragnaw. Oh, he took a bri- uh, break as well. Yeah. Hey, we all got to take our breaks. It's, it's uh, you know, the game definitely can wear on you a bit, especially if you're not winning. But, you know, if you... Always ask questions. Always lean on the community. I mean, if you guys aren't in Slack, Slack is the place to be because um, I think it's actually up here in the account page someplace. No, help claiming. Where the hell is the chat at? I should know this. Oh, there it was. Nope, that's not it either. Anyways, if you find the chat... Join it. Oh, it's under connect, isn't it? There it is. Chat. Duh. So if you find this, um, you know, hop in the chat, join Slack. Um, lots of people are in there. People do gift horses in there. People do all kinds of fun stuff in there. So, uh, which reminds me, I need, did I get everybody? I'm pretty sure I got everybody, right? Barsham, Simdragno. Sudo, Sudo 1967, is that your uh, your name in the in the sim? 
or do you go by something else? I just want to make sure I got the right person because typically what I do is if you participated, I will shoot you some credits. So making sure I got everybody. Yeah, I think I got everybody. We're good. We're good. We're good. Steve Sido. Okay. Perfect, man. Thank you. All right. Rare Minsky. What's up? We're about to wind down. If you got any last minute questions, go ahead and shoot them my way. Otherwise, I will call it an evening. But I'm going to give you all a couple more minutes to ask questions and then we're going to be done. This is in the middle of the night. Yeah, I imagine it is for a lot of people. It's what, 10 o'clock my time. So I can imagine it's probably overseas. It's probably uh, even later than that. Uh, so my question is, if you have a long running mare, you can breed it to a sprint sire and shorten up the distance possibly. You could. Yeah. Oh, 12 p.m. All right. So at least I got the timing right for some for, for at least one uh, time zone. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So Taffy. Yeah. I mean, breeding has an impact, right? So that's the best way I can explain it is, is, you know, when this, when the horses get to bumping uglies, certain things get passed amongst each other, not STDs. Not what I meant by that comment at all. <clears throat> all right. Great when you're working from home. Yeah, working from home is awesome, man. I do it as well. So I'm literally in my office right now. So it's how I'm able to talk to you great people all day. But all right, so we're going to end it there. But again, maybe next week we'll do a quick um, overview. We'll look at some horses. We'll have a discussion. Maybe we'll answer some more questions. We'll do a little more, another little TED Talk. Um but yeah, I appreciate everybody being here. Be on the lookout. You all might get some credits uh, sent your way. Um, and I want to thank everybody for joining. And yeah, it was a good time. Shoot me uh, some horses uh, in, or send me a message, a PM on the forums or even in Slack if you want of a horse you want me to look up. And I'll just randomly pick a few and we'll look. But you all have a good night and a good weekend. And I will catch you all later.